Radhanath Swami has now emerged as one of the biggest leaders of the post-1977 ISKCON Guru project. There's a sort of joke around the ISKCON circles that people in ISKCON have a very short memory. <laughs> they don't seem to remember that some of these big leaders are now promoting were engaged in some kind of very troublesome and problematic activities in the recent past. Now they're gurus, they're messiahs, and so on and so forth. But how did they get to that post, and how many people's heads were stepped on for some of these leaders to get into that position, that is never really taken into consideration. Regarding Radhanath, however, we should first of all review some of the 1986 observations of Jane Wallace of CBS News Television. Jane is the daughter of Mike Wallace, a very famous newscaster for CBS News. She visited New Vrindavan in 1986 and filmed Kirtananda sitting on his big seat, covered with the hands of maybe 50 boys while he was seated on his guru seat. This is also called a Vyasa San seat. And she asked me, why is it that this man is being worshipped like this since it's obvious that he is in pedophile heaven? <laughs> pedophile heaven. Pedophiles are child molesters. So he's sitting there. He's covered with the hands of 50 boys. So she, she just couldn't figure this out. She asked, why are your ISKCON leaders promoting this man as a big guru? And why are hundreds of people, including your biggest leaders, singing glorification songs and prayers to Kirtananda? She couldn't figure it out. Here's a man, he's sitting here with the hands of boys covering his entire body almost. And it's obvious that he's got way too much affection for little boys. And yet, publicly, he's sitting in a big chair covered with the hands of boys like this. And the big leaders, of course, one of the big leaders at the time was... Radhanath. So Jane Wallace was astonished. Why is it that people like Radhanath are glorifying a very self-evidently child-molesting mentality person like Kirtananda? Don't they notice that there's something wrong here? Huh. So she could see, actually she, she was immediately able to see, as soon as she saw Kirtananda seated on his big seat, covered with the hands of the little boys, she immediately understood there's a pedophile problem going on here with this whole program. But Radhanath saw this for years and years and years and years, and he never thought there was anything strange about it. In other words, the question really is, how come the outside people, a person totally outside of the ISKCON orbit, a newcomer to the whole situation, can immediately understand there's a child molester being worshipped, as good as God. And yet the people inside of ISKCON, especially the leaders like Radhanath, could not see or even begin to understand that there was a problem. But Jane Wallace went on. She said, if some obviously pedophile person was sitting in a huge seat in my church, I would personally get up and physically, bodily pull that person out of that chair. I would not allow such a person to sit in a chair like that in my church even if I was attacked and even if I was killed, I would go up there. I would not allow this to take place in my church. So her obvious question was, why is it that in ISKCON, the followers and especially the leaders who are responsible, how come they're not pulling Kirtananda off of his chair and, and stopping this scene, you know, of him sitting in a big seat covered with the hands of little boys? Why is this being allowed? Of course, I didn't really have a good answer because she had this all on film and it was very self-evident that this was going on in ISKCON and it was being encouraged by the leadership at the time. And Radhanath was one of the key people who was promoting Kirtananda at the time. Now also, we have to keep in mind that Kirtananda was being uh, carried around in a palanquin. Huh. Uh, he was wearing a big crown and people were singing, All Glories to King Kirtananda because he had his big crown on. And one of the big singers in that procession was Radhanath. All glories to King Kirtananda, who is the king of child molesting worship in the world. This was 
Ratnath's position at the time, and of course Wumapadi, Kuladri, all the other big leaders of New Vrindavan were also all promoting this program. And now all of these people are being rewarded. Kuladri has been given a big position in ISKCON as a big leader. He's got a big salary. Wumapadi is one of the big gurus of ISKCON. And of course, Radhanath is now the big hero of ISKCON. He's the big savior of ISKCON because he was loyal to the worship of homosexual child molesters as gurus. Now it's interesting that Wumapadi was recently chastised by the ISKCON leadership for uh, aggressing some of his young male disciples in a homosexual way. So in other words, Wumapadi is apparently also a homosexual. Now one of the former followers of Kirtananda told me that many boys were in Kirtananda's cottage and there was a rule that no adults could approach the cottage. Adults were not allowed to come up to the cottage when Kirtananda was there with the 20, 30 little boys who were in his cottage. Didn't someone think this is strange? Why has he got all these little boys in his cottage? Why is he driving around with a little boy on his lap? Why has he always got little boys touching him and he's holding them, etc.? And why is it that Radhanath and Varshana Swami and Kuladri and not only them, but all the other big, giant ISKCON leaders, Sri Dayananda, Ravindu Sarup, they used to come there and have conferences at New Vrindavan. They saw Kirtananda sitting on the seat with all these little boys. They saw him driving around with the boy on his lap. Why didn't they realize that there was a problem here? You know, and then later on, they, they all of a sudden said, wow, there's hundreds of kids being molested all over the place. Gee, I wonder why that's happening. <laughs> they were shocked and surprised that there was a molesting problem going on. So Kirtananda had, you know, key people around him in positions as leaders and teachers and so on who were homosexuals. And many of them were also molesters. So why didn't Radhanath notice this problem? And how come Jane Wallace was able to figure out this problem? In a tenth of a second, she understood there's a molesting problem going on here. But Radnath wasn't able to figure it out and still isn't able to figure it out. He still is not able to figure out that when you worship child molesters, you're going to have child molesting. He still doesn't understand the basic problem. And the proof of this is that instead of Radnath saying that ISKCON is wrong to say that gurus are having sex with men, women, and children, he goes along with that. He supports that. He's very friendly with Jayad Veda, the person who says gurus have sex with men, women, and children. He does not object. He does not protest. He does not stand up and say, wait a minute, God's messiahs are not having sex with children. That's wrong. We shouldn't be saying that. We shouldn't be writing documents that say that. He still does not understand that God's messiahs are not engaged in sex with men, women, and children. It's just not the uh, position of a messiah. Anyway, this is just an introduction. We will later on get into the almost uncountable crimes that were going on under Radhanath's regime at New Vrindavan, including beatings, murders, child molesting, fraud, printing uh, bogus Pope stickers and selling them as if they were the Catholic Church, misrepresenting themselves as the Catholic Church, uh, printing football stickers and making pretend they were representing uh, football teams at, at the football games, and so many other just countless things that were going on. We're going to go through all this as well to show how Radhanath was running a gigantic criminal enterprise. And now he's the Messiah of Iskand.